Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Friday, April the 26th, and it's 2.16 p.m. And I would like to share with you an awesome sermon. Now, this was sent to me by not one, but two of you. And I tried to watch it, not once, but twice. And I kept getting interrupted. And I don't remember by what, uh, one thing or another. It was almost like the devil was trying to keep me from listening to it. And it's no wonder. I've just finally finished it. And I've got to share it with you. It is called How Satan Gets Into Your Head and How to Kick Him Out. By Char um, it's got two slashes, Dr. Charles A. Stewart which means he's probably got a Ph.D. in theology, which, you know, I used to think highly of these guys, and then I'd watch them a while, and then they'd come out with one of their false doctrines that they learned at the seminary. So we know who runs the seminaries now. It's the Jesuits. If you're new and you haven't heard that yet, that's who runs the seminaries. The Jesuits, who actually tell the Pope what to do. Okay. They're right under Satan. They're way up there with the Illuminati. You can do research and find that out if you don't believe it. Okay, the point is, he's talking about something that I have been battling with, and maybe some of y'all. When I try to pray, I get... I mean, I'll be t praying about something, you know, even in the spirit. And as soon as I go back to English, and even sometimes when I'm praying in the spirit, a thought will come into my mind about um, something that's been bothering me. Something that, okay, that was weird. It blacked out, but it didn't have a number. Okay, I, I don't know. Something's going on with my computer. You know, they're messing with us, a lot of us. Um, anyway, I queued it up to a certain point that I'd like to share with you, so I'm going to pull this forward, and at the, see, I wrote it down, oh, I didn't queue it up far enough, 2407, it's only 35 minutes, which is not bad for a sermon, it is great, it's worth your time, it may help you in any, it's, um, he talks about the battle of the mind. Uh, we all have battles in our minds. And where these thoughts come from, they don't come from oh. God. Okay, that's not easy. I can't quite get it on. Well, if I blow it up, that will help. Let me do that. Because I just wanted to give you um, there. All right, here we go. I told you that before I came to this understanding, I would be on my knees and have a Texas Chainsaw Massacre type thought run through my mind. I'm on my knees in prayer. And I used to beat myself up. I think, oh God, I am trash. Here I am talking to you and out of my heart comes this kind of evil, vile thought. And I, I mean, that would just basically destroy my prayer time. You can understand that. But what I understood that because I'm a new creature in Christ, there's no way that thought can come out of my heart because my heart's been redeemed. Amen. See that? <clears throat> I, I guarantee this is going to help you in, in a lot of ways, whatever you're battling with. And I wanted to share one other little part with you that I think will give you the a taste, a good enough taste, you'll want to hear this. Um, let's see, 30, 38. Kind of hard to cue it up. There we go, we'll go with 37. This thought, person thinking about committing suicide. Nobody loves me. How could anybody love me? Would that be served up by the Holy Spirit? No. Because God loves every Christian. He loves everybody. Or this one. I do not have any hope that things would ever get better. People who commit suicide are hopeless. 
Would God ever say to somebody, put in their mind that thought, it's, it's hopeless, there is no hope for me, there is no solution to my problems. Would God serve that thought up? No. But see, have people ever embraced that thought as their own? Sure you have. That is not from God. Is that thought, there is no hope, consistent with the character and the will of the Lord Jesus Christ? No. As long as Jesus is on his throne, there is hope. So folks, do you understand? If any thought does not conform and is not consistent with Jesus' character, his heart, or his will, then it is a thought that is coming from your enemy. Okay, I'll stop it there. And he's basically teaching you how to stop those, those demonic thoughts when they come knocking at the door of your brain to kick them out. Recognize that negative thoughts are not your own and don't take them on as your own. He explains how thoughts from the enemy will come as one of your own. I am a loser. I am no good. Nobody loves me. That's how you would say it to yourself. He doesn't say, you are a loser. You know, you, you can't do anything right. You, he doesn't put it that way in your head. He puts, I can't do anything right. Or something like that. Anyway, I'll leave it go at that. And um, I can't speak for anything else he preaches or teaches because I don't know this person. But this is an excellent teaching for helping you to battle the thoughts that come into your mind that you don't like and don't want there. So kick them out and you will live in a more peaceful, loving, victorious way. Okay, with that, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this little video and the internet connection and over each and every one of you and all of your devices. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.